Typography has a special place in the world of design. It can dramatically impact the way a design feels. It can make a design look busy or clean. It could even be the design itself. So understanding the anatomy and structure of typography will go a long way in deepening your understanding of design. This is a simple serif font, as we know it's a serif font because of those little brackets at the end of each character. Each letter in this word is called a character. If you were to draw a line that hugs the bottom of each letter, not including the little tails, which are called descenders, this line would be called your baseline. You can also draw a line across the top of these characters, which does not include what's called the ascenders, or this little area right here, and you can draw your second baseline. What is in between these two lines is the very core of your word or character. This helps you find a balance in your wording. You may find that you have more ascending and descending characters, and this revelation can help you decide how to balance this logo and type when creating a logo, for example. The line that can be drawn across the top on the tip top of your ascenders is called the ascent line. The line that can be drawn across the bottom of your descenders is called the descent line, so hopefully that can be easy to remember. A really good font, you'll be able to draw these nice straight lines that go across your word or characters. Not all fonts do that. Grip fonts like this one don't always follow the same line patterns. Let's expand our typography vocabulary. The tail is the very tip of the character. The descender, as we know now, makes up the entire bottom section, but the tail is only the very tip. This is the example of the stem of the character. Ears are anything that expands outside of the side of the character, including this G. Fortunately, the anatomy of typography is same similar to human anatomy. So this is an example of a shoulder. Loops are common in certain font types. Anything that is closed inside a character shape is called a closed counter. This is an example of a character leg. Crossbars are the segments that join two stems together, for example in this A. There are around 40 to 50 other total terms of vocabulary words for describing character anatomies, but we will not review them all. There are many I've learned just by creating this lesson that I was unaware of the right vocabulary word for it. That means knowing some of the basics is fantastic, but don't feel like you have to have all of these terms memorized. What's most important is studying how type feels, looks, and behaves with other characters, words, colors, and designs to make our overall pieces cohesive and balanced. I'll go over a few terms that are must-know terms in the world of design. Many of these phrases and terms are thrown around in client emails and professional feedback you may receive, so these are pretty important. Kerning is the manually created space between each character. Each type has a natural kerning added to it. When you manually reduce or expand the spacing between the characters using software, like the ones we'll be using for this class, you'll get the term kerning. In logo design, for example, I always try to manually kern type characters because even slight adjustments can make a big impact on how it looks. The default spacing on fonts is not always perfect. Also, kerning can help balance a logo by increasing or decreasing the space created between characters. Tucking that letter in to reduce extra white space can elevate your type and your design. I love playing around with different font options when I work with headlines or logos. Some fonts work really well for my desired effect. Beautiful serifs, tails, and loops. But take for instance these fonts. Notice how they look pretty similar at first glance, but they vary quite a bit when you zoom in and you know what you're looking for. The space created between sentences or phrases is called letting. The amount of letting that is between sentences in a larger paragraph can really change the look and feel of a block of type.
A larger leading or spacing has a chance to breathe and look very clean. Tighter spacing can feel pretty cramped. When you're learning intermediate or advanced design techniques, you will need to know how to manually space and balance your logos, headline, and custom lettering. When working with headlines, I like to tighten the white space between characters and between words. I tuck certain words into extra white spaces of other words, and it seems to feel right and balance when I do this. We could do this easily in Adobe Illustrator. I'm taking a simple three-word headline and finding the right spacing between the characters and between the words. Notice the big difference using the default spacing in the font and then using my own custom version. There's a big difference when I'm able to kind of noodle around with it. Sometimes your main headline and phrase is the biggest focus of the design and having this custom look goes a long way in looking professional. It's also good to combine different font types and styles for the same headline. It really helps break up the more important words. So in this case, making the and and the other smaller text italics in a script font and combining that with this really nice bold sans serif font really works well here. Also, tucking in words and reducing large amounts of white space between the characters and letters makes it seem like a nice cohesive design. Custom lettering is very important in branding and logo design. In this example, I am taking two types of script fonts and I'm combining them to make one unique blend. Script fonts can be tricky. When you may not like the capital letter of a certain script font, you can switch it out for another script font to see if it looks better and reads better. So in this case, I can actually tell what the first letter is now. You could take a regular typical font and use it as a base font. From there, you can add something totally unique to the font and make it distinct to your brand.